Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, there are Mawdu hadith in, in his work. Yeah. And uh, there are later scholars like Imam um, Zayd al-Din Iraqi, rahimahullah ta'ala, who wrote what they call a takhrij work, which is a critical analysis of all the chains and sourcing all of the hadith. And he was able to identify some of them. Um, Murtadha Zabidi, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his voluminous commentary on the Ihya al also does uh, a good job of that as well, identifies those hadith which are. Um, I mean, sometimes they're basically two hadith that were merged together. Sometimes the, the, the wording is wrong um, or changed, but there are actually forgeries in Imam Ghazali's Ihya al And that's one of the things that, the, you know, when I recommend a translation of the Ihya al Muddin, I, I'm all, oftentimes very hesitant. And the reason is because the translators, and some of the translations are really good, um, but the translator was not a critical Hadith scholar, and so they didn't include Imam Iraqi's or Imam Zabidi's comments on those Hadith. Some um, some do, um, and and that actually only you know I think perpetuates the problem that if you're going to translate the Ihya, you better tra you should translate the critical notes as well. Um, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't use the Ihya. I mean the Ihya, critical Hadith scholars wrote abridgments of it. You know, um, Ibn Josie wrote an abridgment of it, um, and then Ibn Qudam al maqdisi writes an abridgment of his abridgment. Jamal al Qasim. I mean, a lot of the great Hadith scholars wrote abridgments, and and they were looking particularly at this issue amongst other issues when they abridged the, the text. Um, but you'll be surprised. I mean, Imam Ghazali didn't do it intentionally. He actually, it wasn't his field. He was an expert in theology. He was an expert in law and, 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 and uh, legal theory. He wasn't an expert in hadith. Yeah. So it, it's, it, it, we don't mean to denigrate the status of Imam Ghazali in any way, uh, but we just do have to recognize that that wasn't his speciality. One of the great scholars who just passed away, who was a, a Sufi Hadith scholar, one on Yunus um, he I was reading his uh, recently one of his um, um, articles. It was an article, it was a question that he answered about the Hadith of the Sufis. Being a Sufi, he said, you cannot rely on the books of the Sufi for Hadith. Outright. You have to be very, very careful. Whether it be Imam Sha'rani, Imam Ghazali, Ibn Arabi, because it's just not common to find. Hadith scholars who are also Sufia, whose books became popular. There are scholars like them, but you know, you have to be very careful with the books of the Sufis. There are a lot of forgeries in their books, right? In um, khutbas, you know, for us, for our purposes, khutbas, bayans, right? A lot of you know, da'is they have good intentions. They're just not critical Hadith scholars. A lot of ulama also, you know, just because a person's a graduate of an institution of learning doesn't mean that they're critical Hadith scholars. Critical Hadith scholars are very few in number. Um, so even if you hear like a khatib who's a trained alim of deen, you cannot even use their speech as evidence that the hadith that they're using is sound. Right. Wa alaikum